Over the past few weeks, a convergence of seemingly unrelated issues that I've talked about on this show are leading to a fascinating swing in the market. The government's debt ceiling blocking issuing of fresh bonds, a Federal Reserve's unlimited bond buying program, and private banks with all this cash and nowhere to put it. Out of nowhere, government bonds have become the must have of the winter season. Word on the street is the issuer of those bonds isn't allowed to make more until Congress raises the debt ceiling. Do your holiday shopping early before the Federal Reserve and the banks snap them all up. Now, this sudden imbalance of supply and demand in the bond market is wreaking havoc across financial markets in the strangest of ways. So, let's start with the banks. The economy is growing, businesses are hiring, stocks are marching ever higher, and the banks, well, they're sitting on big piles of cash. If only they had a better place to put it. Now, people are flush with cash, meaning two things. First, they're depositing a bunch of money into the banks, and second, they're not taking out loans from the banks. Federal regulations are pretty clear that banks can't invest much money in stocks and other risky assets. Because a commercial bank investing in stocks would not only be like playing high stakes poker with someone else's money, but it's like playing high stakes poker with investors' money and the FDIC insuring that money against losses. Ooh, seven high, all in. Now, because of the bank's legal inability to take on much risk, they're currently the designated driver at the world's wildest party. Wow, this looks like a bunch of fun. Oh man, you guys are doing some seriously irresponsible stuff. Am I the only one here whose judgment is not impaired? I'm just gonna sip some water and buy bonds in the background. Rates on treasury bonds are still at historically low levels, but banks have been buying government debt like never before. In the second quarter of 2021, banks bought a record of about $150 billion worth of treasuries. All this cash and next to nowhere I can legally put it. Guess I'm gonna have to continuously bid up the price of government debt. Now with the government no longer issuing new debt, this strange pent up cash has found a weird place to unleash itself. The repo markets. That's right, the banks are now picking at the core Federal Reserve program, their precious key interest rate. Now to understand this next part, think about this whole setup like a bunch of competing gas stations, one of which is owned by the federal government. The feds say, we want to get people moving, so we're going to make gas cheaper. All the other stations are charging 4 bucks a gallon, why don't you come over to Uncle Sam's and we'll hook you up with $2 a gallon. Nobody's going to pay that 4 bucks, and you can get 2 bucks a gallon from the feds. Either everyone else needs to lower their prices or get out of the way. So now more people are driving everywhere and they look at the reports and say, emissions are definitely becoming a problem. We're going to want to raise prices to $3 a gallon so people drive a little less. We're still the cheaper option, but now people are going to be paying $3 a gallon and hopefully cutting out some things. Now here's the rub. This monetary scheme only works if the Federal Reserve is the lender of last resort. And because of this strange cash glut, they may have been dethroned from that position earlier this week. You need cash and the Fed is offering it at a whole whopping 0.71% interest rate? Well, let me Chase Bank bail you out for half that, brother. I got all this cash burning a hole in my pocket here. Now this is setting off real red lights across the Federal Reserve dashboard because of a newfound lack of control. The key interest rate, as the name would suggest, is the one interest rate to rule them all. Whoever has the lowest prices controls it. Essentially, it's the amount that a bank gets charged for an overnight loan to keep in line with reserve requirements. Lend out a bit too much money today? Well, you can either borrow it as cash from the feds, or you can look to their competitors to keep your books in line. This has ripple effects across the entire economy because if you borrow money at essentially no cost, you're probably going to lend it out on the cheap. Well, we can always get more of it, don't cost us anything. 
Now that overnight lending rate starts going up on the other hand, and all of a sudden things start getting more expensive. Well, it's going to cost me 2% to borrow the cash to cover this loan, so I'm going to pass that right along to you, the person borrowing the money from me. Banks start charging each other more, start charging consumers more, and money just generally finds a way to become more expensive to acquire. Great for fighting inflation, not so good for the number of new job postings on Indeed. Now with this glut of cash in the bank's reserves, the key interest rate is looking a lot less important all of a sudden. Alright, we're raising our rates to a quarter of a percent. Stop lending out so much money. Uh oh, you're, you're just going to ignore me and keep lending each other money at cheaper rates? Well, guess we're not fighting inflation. Currently, the Federal Reserve has its reserve rate set at between 0% and 0.25%. Now, on a level of nuance I never thought I'd get into on this show, some recent Fed notes have revealed that they're trying to get interest rates to the higher end of that spectrum. You know, start slowing things down a little bit, fight some inflation, take a break. Don't worry banks, we're not going to raise interest rates to the next tier of 0.25% to 0.5%. But boy, I wouldn't mind seeing them settle at 0.24% for a little while. Now, unfortunately for the Federal Reserve, despite their best efforts to make that rate go up, we recently saw the opposite happen. The effective federal funds rate slipped by one basis point. They actually had to cut prices to maintain control of this rate. It's the economic equivalent to trying to command a stray dog. Sit, stay. Oh, you're walking away. Well, I need to show the world I'm still in control. Uh, poop on my carpet and bite my couch legs. See, he's still doing what I'm telling him to. Exacerbating the problem, banks are now flush with cash and few people are applying for loans. So, well, not only is the supply of these repo loans up, but the demand for overnight cash in this overnight lending window is way, way, way down. Oh, you're going to make overnight loans more expensive? Cool story. Let me know when you actually have someone I can lend money to to get under the reserve requirements and need to borrow that money from you. Until then, I'm just going to lend my money out to the lucky bank that can actually find a borrower. Now, borrowing did briefly spike when the pandemic hit, as companies tapped their lines of credit. But the now booming economy is not producing demand for loans, just as banks have plenty of money on hand to lend. So there you go. Essentially banks have too much money right now, don't know what to do with it, and are ending up undermining government control by lending it to one another. Did I just suddenly walk into a New Yorker cartoon? Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.